Today, we are going to walk through the basic setup of your Garmin LifeScope system. Almost every time that you go out, the water conditions will be different. This means that your settings for one trip may not work for your next trip. If the LifeScope sonar image is distorted and normal settings are not resolving the image, you can reset your LifeScope system to default from your LifeScope sonar page. Select Menu, Sonar Setup, Installation, Restore Sonar Defaults. You will now want to check the orientation of the transducer itself. The LiveScope transducer has what is called an Attitude Heading Reference Sensor, or AHRS. This allows the system to know what orientation the transducer is mounted in and is how the system is able to change between forward, down, and perspective modes automatically. You will want to make sure that the AHRS has been calibrated recently and especially if you have moved the mounting location. AHRS will only work if the LiveScope transducer is mounted on a shaft or on the transom of the boat. To calibrate the AHRS from the LiveScope sonar page, select Options, Sonar Setup, Installation, and Calibrate Compass. Then follow the on-screen instructions. Keep in mind this only allows the transducer to choose between orientations and if you want to know the direction the transducer is pointed in relation to the boat, you will need a separate heading sensor. You will need to manually configure the orientation if you have a LiveScope transducer that is mounted on a trolling motor barrel. This can be done from the LiveScope Sonar page by selecting Options, Sonar Setup, Installation, and Orientation. Select either Down or Forward, matching how you have your transducer oriented. You may need to manually configure the orientation of the transducer if the AHRS is not working or calibrating. Now, test the view using a lure in the path of the beam. Next, you can start adjusting the settings for your current conditions. The first thing we would look at is interference levels. The noise reject setting allows us to counteract interference in the image. This setting can be found on the LiveScope sonar page by selecting Options, Sonar Setup, and Noise Reject. Set noise reject to high for high levels of interference. Set noise reject to low or off for low levels of interference. Most often, setting noise reject to medium is the best option. Occasionally, you may see what looks like a starburst in a ring around the transducer. This can hide objects close to the boat. To lessen this starburst, you will want to set the TVG to a higher setting. Ghost reject lessens the effect of phantom rays and objects appearing on screen due to signals bouncing off the bottom and being incorrectly reflected at the transducer. This is especially useful in shallow water with a hard bottom. Gain can be adjusted from the LiveScope Sonar page by selecting Options, then Gain. Too low of a gain will erase targets completely, causing them not to appear. Too high of a gain will wash out your targets with clutter. Keep in mind that range is similar to gain, where it is more of an individual preference than something that is correct or incorrect. Depth can also affect gain. Deeper water will require a higher gain setting, while shallower water will require a lower gain setting. Gain is also subjective, so what is a good setting for one person may be different for someone else. Remember that this setting will more than likely need to be adjusted continuously throughout the day. The last setting that plays an important factor in good returns is the range. The range is the distance the LiveScope sonar is showing. A range that is set further out is generally better in deeper water. This will cause your targets to be smaller. A range that is set closer is generally better in shallower water. This will cause your targets to be larger, but you may lose the distance that you want. 
Now we can adjust a few different filters on your live scope. Color schemes can be changed in your live scope settings menu. First, we will go to Options, then Sonar Setup. Select Appearance, then select Color Scheme. Here we will filter through the different color schemes of the LiveScope system. Once we find the color scheme that works best for you, let's look at the color gain setting. From the LiveScope screen, select Options, select Sonar Setup, select Appearance, then select Color Gain. The settings will be on default, which is 50%, if the device has been reset. Increasing the color gain will increase the brightness of targets and the bottom. Too much color gain increase can result in a distorted return from the LiveScope image. Too little color gain can result in not seeing your bottom or targets from the LiveScope image. Color Limit is a new setting from Garmin that was released on Echomap UHD and GPS Map Series chart plotters compatible with the Panoptics LiveScope. The Color Limit setting can be found in the apparent settings of the LiveScope. From the LiveScope screen, select Options, select Sonar Setup, select Appearance, then Color Limit. Color Limit is used when we want to reduce the amount of background noise that may appear in distorted water. This color limit is set to 0% when starting in default settings. Too much of the Color Limit setting can result in targets and detail being distorted. Remember, the live scope can always be reverted back to default settings. The live scope will need to be calibrated again if restoring sonar defaults is done on a Garmin chart plotter. Understanding these settings should allow you to get the best possible image on your live scope sonar. And that's it. Thanks for watching. For more help, please visit marinesupport.garmin.com.